Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek at Old Pueblo Coin, and I am excited today to bring an interview to you with Ian Russell from Great Collections, greatcollections.com. He is an auction site, but also it is put together by a man who uh, I think you'll find rather interesting because he has an accent. And as Americans go, we just, anyone with an accent, we instantly think is more intelligent than ourselves. And also, you know, his story I think is also very compelling. So we get into a little bit of his backstory throughout the numismatic journey that he gets into and of course into great collections. And then there's a little bit of a bombshell at the back end and uh, we'll talk more about that. That'll actually be a separate separate interview, separate story, separate video that we'll get into. So uh, leave some comments down below, hit the like button and thanks for watching. Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek at Old Public Coin, and happy today to have Ian Russell from Great Collections. Thanks for joining us. Hey, great to be here. Thanks for having me on. So, for those of you who don't know, Great Collections is a uh, great website that you can go to and you can bid on coins. It's an auction site, and also, of course, you can consign coins there. And before we get into the actual business of the business and what it's like to to own and operate that, I wanted to ask you a little bit about your uh, background in numismatics, your upbringing. Um, when did you first get the bug? So when I was a teenager, I actually started off uh, as a stamp collector, and I started working at a stamp shop on weekends and after after school. I would um, go in. I, I was brought up on the northern beaches in in Sydney, Australia, and. Uh, I would catch a bus or, or get a ride into the city and uh, work on weekends and work on Tuesday, Thursday afternoons. Uh, and then that kind of expanded. Uh, my first job uh, was for an auction house uh, in Sydney that uh, also had coins and banknotes. But banknotes, um, banknotes, I, I I loved immediately, and and I tried to really expand that at, at the company. And I, I was very young, and um, I loved it though. And and uh, uh, then I moved to America uh, a few years later. Uh, the The industry is so much bigger over here, and so when I would meet dealers that would visit Australia, I, I was just blown away by how much business and how many coins people see and go through. Uh, in Australia, it's not quite the same, <laughs> and it's still vibrant. It's still great down there, but it, it, in America, it, you go to a big show here that's every few weeks, and it's substantially bigger than the yearly show in Australia. And uh, that's uh, uh, what attracted me. And plus, I, I came to love the country. And obviously, I consider it a home now. Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting, you started with stamps, and then went straight to paper. So your first two first two loves were not made out of metal. No, and true. I mean, I, I still like coins. And I was learning a lot about coins mm -hmm. at the auction house. Uh, but for whatever reason, the paper money Paper money was the the first thing that I, uh, I mean, I certainly, yeah, I gravitated towards, and it helped that I had a a uh, con a meeting with a consigner um, when I first first got the job at the auction house, and it was I didn't even know what the meeting was going to be about, and it was about his paper money collection that he wanted to sell, and it was a substantial collection. And a great surprise, like I was blown away, half the notes I'd never seen before. And I started researching the next day in catalogs and their reference from auctions decades earlier and things. It, it blew me away. And um, and then it just progressed. And then when I came to America, it it went exclusively to coins and uh, and obviously paper money too, but coins was 90% of it the, the second did, I moved. Did you move into coins because uh, you were drawn to it or because the business level demanded it like were you was this a personal interest or is it because you started working somewhere and you said oh coins is the thing here no i mean i could have really done anything actually when i moved here it was for a stamp company um i wanted to move into the the coins and i still wanted to do paper money even though it was a smaller smaller part of it um but no my first option i mean i yeah it would have been i think they hired me as a as a, somebody that knew about stamps yeah, that well, you know, do, do you consider stamps to be a good area for a young person to get into today? You know, it's very different. I mean, I still I still keep an eye on that 
that industry and I, I've started buying stamps again. I actually sold all my, my stamp collection 15 or 12, 12 years ago to, to uh, use for great collections funding. And um, I still enjoy it, but it's it's not the same. It's just not, there are some young people involved, some really smart people. I would say there's still many more younger people involved in coins, not just in the US, but also overseas. And um, so that's always been the worry with with stamps that, uh, uh, I mean, people, when I was younger, 20, 25 years ago, uh, people would say that the market is old and and dying for, for stamps. I mean, it's still going. There's still a market. So it, that didn't happen. Uh, and there's still younger people involved in it. But I I, I don't know. I enjoy coins much more. And it, it's, it's uh, uh, I guess I like all collectibles, but coins is my, my love. Well, I need to correct you on one thing. Uh, you still are young. So <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Um, I, I used to feel that way when I was at a coin show, and now I see this new group, this new younger crowd. Oh. That it's awesome. It's really, really great to see. Uh, yes. This has happened kind of since COVID, yep. and it's. Uh, it, I don't know. That inspires me too. Uh, it inspires me to um, to work harder and smarter. I guess too. Yeah, when I go to smaller shows, I'm still the young guy in the room. But if I go to major shows. No, I mean, there's all these kids running around that are like 18, you know, they're not allowed to own their own checkbook. They're 17. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. They've got nicer coins than I do. And I'm like, Man. some of them have big coins, right? And they're dealing and they're buying five figure coins, selling five figure coins. Yeah. And uh, it's quite, uh, quite amazing, impressive. And, and yeah. really, really uh, inspires me for the market uh, longer term. And, and uh, yeah, it, it I, I love it. I love seeing it. Do you now? Maybe you can see this from your from your um, data you get from great collections. So I've got guys who've come to me. They said, "Hey, all these young kids are great, but also they all want to be dealers." Are there any young collectors? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. there's definitely, and we we're a little bit different. I mean, when we started in 2011, uh, we already knew our demographic was much younger than everyone else in the industry, and. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily promote it, but I wouldn't hide it either. If I was talking with you, I would tell you, hey, our, our clientele are much younger than what you see at a coin show. And uh, since COVID, though, since shows stopped for a while and then have come back and there's obviously this younger crowd that are going to shows, uh, it's more obvious for everyone. But we'd, we'd seen that for a while. Yeah, of course, it's a new level now. But but in 2015, 16, 17, when people were saying uh, the average age of a coin collector is uh, getting older every year, uh, we would be seeing, look, we have we had a client, I remember in 2014, he was 31 years old and was spending millions of dollars. And yeah. uh, and but I don't think those people went to coin shows. So most dealers right. didn't see it. Right. And, uh, I, I still run into that with people who have a perception somewhat of a negative perception of the market or the future of the market and and i think it's just because there are so many different watering holes now that yep. you can go to for coins and so um i've been doing this 25 years also and so when i started it was you go to the coin shop in town or you go to a coin show or you have numismatic publications and that was kind of it. And you had your coin club. But today, between Facebook groups and Instagram posts, and everyone's got a website, you know, you can live in the middle of nowhere and be involved in coins. You know, and, and so I just think that there's there's thousands of collectors who don't even show up on the radar. Yeah. You know, and hundreds of thousands, maybe, that don't show up on the radar anywhere. Because if you just own a shop in a small town you're not seeing a fraction of the traffic that's actually handling coins now. Yeah. And we, yeah, and we, we completely, I agree with you completely. I'm, uh, and I've seen that, that for a while, um, but it's obviously exploded since, since COVID. Yeah. Well, let, let's talk a little bit about great collections because that's uh, what you're, I think most well known for now in the current marketplace. Um you know, you have a business, would you start in 2011? Is that when it started up? 2011. Yeah. 2011 we started. So what was, what really was the thought process of like, okay, I think, I think the marketplace needs this. So uh, I didn't see anybody doing what I liked about coin auctions. Um, one, I didn't see one company doing 
all the aspects that I liked about coin auctions. And so uh, when, when I was planning this, I was inspired by six or seven different companies and taking something from each of them, whether it be eBay or some of the live auctions or even some outside of our industry. Uh, I thought that uh, I liked the speed aspect. I didn't think that you needed to wait months to sell coins. Uh, uh, and I didn't, I, I didn't also think that they needed to go necessarily to coin shows that they, if we get the imaging correct, we can, we can inspire uh, bidders based on high quality images of how the coins look. So there are a few different things that we wanted to uh, bring together. And, and I also wanted to start something from scratch. I didn't think that I worked for a large uh, auction house in coins uh, at the time from up until 2010. And I didn't think that I could change anything that was existing out there. So I wanted to start something from scratch because there was no legacy issues. There was no legacy expectations. Right. right. Um, when you change, when you have something being done one way for a long period of time, yeah. it's very difficult to change that. And yeah, as someone who bought a coin shop that he worked at for 20 years, like I, I feel that very much so where, yeah, you, can't, you know, it, I, you can't there's part that. of me when I look, I'm like, if I just started my own thing, how different would it look versus what I've grown into? You know, and it's like there's a very different break break down now break down the speed issue. Now you had said you wanted you, you didn't think speed the speed of listing and selling at auctions should take long, right? And now what was the issue with that? Now that you wanted to make well, so in 2000, 2010, 2011, uh, some of the large auction houses would have three or four auctions a year and they're working in advance. So if you want to consign to the next sale, you might be, it might be uh, three months ahead before the auction. And then there's another 45 days afterwards. It would be a four and a half, five month process. And because I'll, you, maybe if you timed it perfectly and got it right on deadline, it's it would be a little bit shorter, but it would still take way too long. Um, we, I mean, we can move coin. We, we're listing coins Within, mostly within 21 days of them arriving, some of them within seven days. We, in fact, we have a, a uh, uh, some coins that arrived yesterday that are listing this coming Monday, three three days time. Um, if there's duplicates, we spread them out and things like yeah. that. But for the most part, we can list coins very quickly, and uh, that's yeah, that's one of one of our. Your advantages. your auction format is you know online and online only, not in person, right? Well, yeah. So that's that's a. Uh, like some people refer to it as at their online auctions and as as if that's a negative, um, which I, I know you're not, but it, some people yeah. do say that. We have viewers of our coins. We have people flying into our office. In fact, I'm in uh, our viewing room at the moment uh, uh, to, speaking with you here, but um, we have people flying in four or five days a week viewing coins. All the bidding happens online. And so, yeah, it's online from that standpoint, which is not that different than the traditional live auctions that if you go to a live auction at a major show, sometimes there's one or two people in the room and really all the bidding is happening online, uh, yeah. which is uh, really very similar to what we do. Yeah. Well, and so but your, your auctions are weekly. Yeah. So we have every auctions every week as well. And it's thousands of coins, wide range. Every week, there's something for everyone. We like to say that there's all price ranges. So there's coins for $20 and, there's coins for hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, and everywhere, everywhere in between. Yeah. So you tried to service the whole industry. You're, you're, yeah, not we're not... Take, you're not looking to take only five figure coins and up. No, that's, that's the other key ad advantage. We're not, uh, we're not trying to pick and choose and just, I mean, of course I would love to only sell $10,000 coins. Love that, but it doesn't work and it doesn't work for collectors. We, we built great collections for collectors and uh, collectors that collect $10,000 coins also need a place to buy and sell $50 coins. And we may not make money on the $50 coins, but from our standpoint, it, it, we want to be able to handle all, all types of coins. And it, it's really essential. It, it's a, it would be a much worse experience if we avoided lower value coins. Yeah. You know, I, I know exactly what you mean by that. I mean, I sometimes you just have to to handle all the different areas. But he, here's the thing, and this is 
A lot of people don't understand this. The guy who's buying a $50 coin today, you know, down the road, maybe a guy buying a $5,000 coin. Oh, he, we see that. We see he, that all the he's time. He's either new to the hobby. Yep. Or he's a younger guy, doesn't have the income yet. Or he's a guy with a family, doesn't have the The number of guys who I know, it's like after they get their kids through the college years, all of a sudden they're like, oh, wait. They I suddenly have a big chunk of money to stuff. spend. <laughs> I want to do. Right. You know, and and so you, I definitely have seen that with just the collector's pattern. And, you know, the same thing also, though, I'll see guys that they in, they inherit money and they've been a collector, you, you know, at the coin shop for decades and they've never had a lot of money to spend and it didn't matter. And then finally, all of a sudden they have some money. They're like, oh, I know what I want. You know, and they've got this this really cool coin they've been they've been dreaming about. So, yeah, we've, we've definitely seen that uh, with inheritances. We've seen people uh, end up selling their businesses after many years and having finally having the money that they can buy their dream coins. Uh, and we've also, I mean, we had a client win the lottery uh, uh, that went, I mean, his invoice, his records of invoices were $140, $240, and like maybe 150 invoices in a row like that. Uh-huh. And then suddenly it was $28,000, $86,000. And it was every week was five figures, some weeks, six figures. And uh, after a few of them, I, I actually called him up and said, Hey, uh, thank you. Thank you for your business. Thank you for your hundred dollar purchases, but also these large ones. And he admitted that he, he won the lottery and, uh, which was we've, great. We've got a running joke about customers at our shop that play the lottery that, yeah, I, I want you to win the lottery. That'd be just fine. Right. 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 Go ahead and win the lottery. It'd be good. So of course now, obviously coins, coins, and coins, but if you're now great collections also handles paper money right paper money yeah and it's our goal it's our goal to get into other collectibles as well that's why we called it great collections and obviously coins coins our love and and paper money um which i i love too but um our goal is eventually to get into other other collectibles so i was going to ask you specifically about the name of the company because i thought it was very interesting uh you know a lot of companies are named after founders or this that and the other and Great collections, I thought, is just like a really nice name in general. How did you? How did that come to you? The great collections idea for the name of the of the branding and everything. So I wanted something very generic um, that worked for all collectibles. I didn't think it should be about me or any single person at the company. Um, I think that you're right. In our industry, there's a lot of companies that are based on their founder or their expert. Um, but I wanted something really generic and the, we had some other plans, plan names that great collections was number one. And there was a far distant second and third and fourth, and they were terrible in hindsight, uh, looking <laughs> back on it. Um, and, uh, I even, yeah, I, it, there was an issue. The, the domain name was owned by a little gift shop and we tried to buy the domain name, great collections and had some issues and, uh, we ended up getting it, but it, 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 and really glad we did because if we didn't get the domain name, we couldn't have, we wouldn't have used great collections. But yeah, well, and that's it. You were you were right in the throes of making sure that your product lined up with a with a web address, right? And yeah, we, sure that all worked. Yeah, out. and and then uh, and uh, yeah, and and I'm so glad I didn't just pick one that had coins or something, and then have to yes. rebrand now or something that would not be not be ideal. Do you do you have a business background, a formal education in that or? No, so uh, I started working in the industry very young, and I really learned uh, on on the job. And I've always been intrigued by. I mean, I love the business aspect as well. I love dealing with. Uh, I love handling obviously uh, expensive coins and putting transactions together, doing the deal, whether whether it be a consignment or selling something privately or purchasing something privately. Uh, I really really love that aspect. Yeah. Well, you know, I was just curious as to whether or not there was any other special training that you had other than just getting a foot in the door and working hard. No, I, I mean, I, I had great, great mentors uh, in Australia, and that really helped. I mean, I had people that um, I, I hung around a lot of uh, older people at the time. And uh, when I was 18 and 20, 21, 22, um, I considered my mentors and my friends, they were in their 60s and 70s. Uh, in fact, one was in their 80s. Um, and 
uh, learn so much from them and uh, very lucky, lucky there. Yeah, that's cool. Well, that's, I mean, that's still true today. I think generally speaking, it's, you know, the best learning you will get is from someone else with experience. Without a doubt. And uh, it's not a matter of reading a book and it's much more difficult. Like even my company here, when we're training people, we don't have a formal training policy. It's all on the job. You, you need to see how we're doing things. Um, It's uh, uh, yeah. For better or worse, very different than other industries where maybe you can, study and maybe there will be a hundred page manual for what to do, but it doesn't really work in, in our industry. Um, what, uh, your, your wife is, uh, is she VP? How does this work? She's the boss really. Oh, okay. Well, I, uh, I answered her. Ask so, that question. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Raylene, uh, she's been in, in coins, uh, longer than me, really. She started at PCGS. Uh, I think in the late nineties and I met her uh, at uh, Bowers and Morena uh, when she was, she was working there and we started this together. Uh, I had this plan that I was going to start it regardless. And I, I said, look, you can do whatever you want to do. You can stay, stay doing what you're doing. We could start something completely different. If you want to, if you want to do something else, I remember saying at the time she was baking cupcakes a lot and I was saying, Hey, if you want to make a cupcake shop, you can do that and I'll I'll still do this. And uh, she said she was along for the ride with great collections. And I'm I'm so glad because it wouldn't have worked. I, I mean, I was going to do it anyway, but as it turned out a few months into it, it was obvious uh, it wouldn't have worked uh, without her. So. so she's got experience with um, other than cupcakes, which I applaud that 100%. Um, so she, you, were you guys both working at Bowers together? Yes. Yeah, okay. we, uh, that's, uh, that's where we met uh, okay. in 2000. So- Oh, I see. I was thinking PCGS needed its own dating site, but Bowers does. Okay. Yeah, that's true. That's now true. I know. Um, uh, I think everyone point, does. Coincollectorsonly.com. Yeah. So, um, so no, that's cool. So, but the timeline then, though, she was at, you guys were there together and then she went to PCGS or? No, she was at PCGS and PCGS when first. our parent company I that I worked for at, at uh, Bowers and Marina, it was uh, Spectrum, Spectrum Group acquired uh, Teletrade, which I was primarily uh, working for, and then acquired Bowers and Morena, and as well as a bunch of the employees. And so that's when we got to know each other there. And we left together in 2010, uh, 2011, in that range, and then started in 2000, started Great Collection in 2011. Well, to me, that's a pretty incredible, uh, well, I was going to say love story, but actually it's a pretty incredible success story because uh, clearly you guys had both been working hard and successful within the industry already. And then you're like, we're going to go do something completely different. And, um, how nervous were you that it wouldn't fly? It's funny. I was telling someone the other day about this, that I was pretty confident. I mean, I had different projections lined up and I would, we had very low overhead, our living expenses were nothing and it was really cheap. So um, I was pretty confident it was going to work, but I, I had some people in the industry that were negative about it. Uh, and I mean, it, it probably motivated me more at the time um, because I was wanting to prove them wrong. But there were people I looked up to in the industry that uh, that said, yeah, it's not. It, That's hard, it, right? It was it was tough. And I remember it, but it, I also found it. Uh, I really did find it motivational and and now maybe they deny having the conversation they did. But I remember one in particular, which I won't mention names. Yeah, it, was, I, it was very, uh, it, it, I was a little, I came I, I came away from it kind of uh, thinking, what am I missing? Am I missing something? And I like, because it's somebody I really looked up to and, uh, and yeah, but glad, glad he was wrong in that, in that respect. Well, it's hard because, you know, I, I know that I've, I feel a lot of the same things that you've felt like I, you know, for me, for what we do here on our YouTube channel, it's like the anti YouTube YouTube, we don't do anything like the way YouTube teaches us to do it. We're just doing what we do. And we're moving forward. And, and it's a similar kind of feel I I think I can relate where, um, you know, I have a lot of people telling me you should be doing x, y and z. And I'm doing like L, F, and D. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> like I just, right, right. But, yeah, like, but, but I works. haven't. That's, that's why you have followers on here. And it, and it's a slightly different format. And look, you have Tim Tams and Fosters in the background. And it's that's not normal. If, if, if I would have, God bless my wife for not 
letting me get like a full on Aussie hat and stuff and <laughs> playing. I, I had a whole shtick worked up and and she's like, yeah, I don't know if that's really the right move. I'm like, okay, <laughs> fine. Next, next but, time. But I knew, but you know, I knew you had a sense of humor and you didn't care. I haven't met an Australian, by the way, without a sense of humor. Well, uh, no, they they probably do exist. <laughs> <They> just, <laughs> I'm sure they do somewhere. Yeah, where, where do they live in South Wales? Anyway, New South Wales. It'd be New South Wales. <laughs> Pretending I know Australian geography here, but uh, so so the uh, back to back to the uh, idea behind what you've done, and then just what we're doing here. I am. I got to say the what I'm excited about is a lot of the people who are interested in what we do here are clearly very into coins they're not into like clickbait and all this other stuff and a lot a lot of the people who i deal with because of the youtube channel deal with great collections and so that was the natural transition where i had a lot of people who are like hey you know you got to go talk to to ian russell and so um you know it was it was really a lot of that a lot of a lot of the viewers were like, "Yeah, this this is a company that we deal with," and you would know how many people you deal with because you know you've got all the database, so you already know. Well, I mean, we deal with a lot of people, and and it's always growing. We try to do a, a great job looking after everyone. I don't, we're not perfect, but we we yeah. try to do everything we say we're going to do, and uh, we try to keep the lowest fees and and provide the fastest service. Um, we're always growing, and we're always trying new things. We're building a great team of people here, and um, it's it, uh, it's still fun. It, I mean, it's still fun to me. Uh, Twelve years later, I, I'm still here seven days a week, and I, I do it. It's not because of the money. I do it because I enjoy it. So, is is that great collection staple? Uh, lowest fees, uh, quickest service. Is that kind of like? Yeah, I think that's that's what we try to do. I mean, we we think. I mean, I think we're good at marketing. I think we're good at knowing what uh, people are looking for with coins, whether they're looking to buy or looking to sell. We're we're very good at being able to market market coins uh, exceptionally well. I, I think, and that's that's a big, I think, competitive advantage. Um, that we can we can even though we're selling a lot of coins every week, we can really get coins in front of the right people i think is if that makes sense yeah no i was going to ask you about what you meant by the by the marketing aspect for what you guys do um the right coins in front of the right people so that's a that's a kind of a computer whiz kind of thing that you do is that it's, like part, it's partly that but it's also we're very hands-on i mean I, I i spend three four days a week on the phone uh or emailing clients making personal recommendations or comments on certain coins and so forth. Uh, we manage a lot of want lists um, that are not computerized. I mean, we have computerized want lists too, but uh, we manage a lot of want lists that are not computerized and we're always, yeah, always reviewing them. You you just, I, I don't know if you just broke my heart or made me happy. What Want lists have been very difficult for me in this, this current the, the, this is a me thing, not a you thing. So I probably shouldn't bring it up. But I, no, no. Our, our our business was built on want lists when I started, and then the transition for me personally over the last couple of years has been very. I mean, we're we're really different than we were, but it's not exactly intentional, and so we're really are that house that has the five different additions to it, and pretty soon you have a pretzel instead of a house, and so I need to go off on a mountain somewhere and uh, just sit and think because I need the time to to plan out some of my business strategy and actually actually getting after th after all the things that I know I should be getting after so yeah and and sometimes uh sometimes it's tough sometimes it's sometimes there's a lot of work and sometimes it um sometimes there's a lot of work for nothing that's I've hunted down coins and yeah. been a day too late or found the wrong coin or like there's sometimes you put a lot of effort into things that maybe don't pan out exactly as you expect, but other times it, it does. Yeah. Well, you know, some of the times that it has worked out, tell, tell me, do you remember the first time you, you got a million dollar coin? So it's funny, my most memorable, memorable coins may not be million dollar coins. I understood. Uh, and uh, like, I remember the first coin we had that was 
it was a sixty sixty thousand dollar coin. We valued it at thirty thousand at the time, and it was in about six months into launching Great Collections, and all of our projections, all of my projections, didn't equate for fifty thousand dollar coins. Uh, I didn't think that was our target market, and I didn't even think that was a possibility. And I remember it opened up my eyes. Then I was thinking, wow, if we can sell a sixty thousand dollar coin in our first six months, yeah. then why couldn't we do this every week? And it took a while, and you, it, it's not overnight. Um, first million dollar coin, good question. At Great Collections, the first million dollar coin was probably some private treaty coins that we handled. It wasn't an auction. Um, the first million dollar coin we sold at Great Collections was uh, the 93S dollar a few years ago. That broke two million dollars. Actually, most most expensive Morgan Morgan dollar uh, that we auctioned. But we also we do a lot of private treaty transactions uh, for want lists that we're servicing, and uh, including many seven figure yeah many seven figure yeah. coins last. So before. so you so you're you're working the phones and contacts and going to shows and stuff and and because you're working your want list, you've got all kinds of stuff you're doing behind the scenes that are not going to great collections, not going to the website. No, I mean some do, and it all helps. It all helps our auction business, right? If we have want lists, when coins appear in our auctions, we're definitely recommending them for the auction. Uh, we've just had some unusual or lucky situations where we're where we have want lists, and some people may not want to auction for whatever reason, even though I may recommend it. And there's there's a few coins we've sold privately over the last couple of years that I think the sellers have left so much money on the table not auctioning. Uh, yet they they didn't want to auction it, and um, it's uh, uh, yeah we we're brutally honest with people as well. That's the other key difference. If if we think a client's making a mistake, or if we think something is terrible or really good, we'll tell everyone and we'll be blunt about it. Some people don't like that, but we're sometimes we're brutal, but particularly if if. Uh, they say, are you sure or something? <laughs> we'll be even more uh, direct. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, no, it's it's hard to manage expectations. It definitely uh, it definitely is. And I, I guess I'm referring to it. We've had a few in the last week. We've had a few uh, people uh, contact us with very low. I'm, I'm sure you get them in your shop all the time, uh, but contact us with uh, varieties that are not varieties and you know the people that are uh, seeing the 69s double dies or 58p double dies, and they're just not. And yeah, ten they are. They want to believe they are, but um, I'm I'm just I'm signed because I'm that we're never going to get rid of that stuff with the internet. Like it's so bad, it's just gotten worse and worse with well, and and that's the, that's the yeah, you're right. It is it's it's getting worse, and then there'll be something, and sometimes it's something we've sold, like the when we sold the 58 double die for over a million bucks. Uh, it we got so many calls, and I'm sure everyone did it. It weren't just calling us; it got publicity and general press. And it's uh, yeah, very it's it's very annoying. And most of the general press, and even other uh, people online that maybe don't know coins as well as they should, then they're, they're not disclosing that how rare the coin is. They're saying, "Oh, you can find this in your pocket," and when. In reality, you have a higher a higher chance of winning the lottery or or something like that. Well, I think the lesson today is that I'm going to just play the lottery instead of looking yeah, for my exactly. coins. Exactly, and you'll end up with great coins. <laughs> That's right, because then I can go buy coins from Ian at Great Collections and have a good time with it. Right. right. That, that's funny. That's funny. Um, some of the folks back at the, on the YouTube uh, channel chat board had just um, asked a few questions any uh, representatives from great collections going to any shows in texas for consignments do you know if you got any texas shows on your radar coming up you know i was in texas two weeks ago in houston um uh i don't think we have anything in the immediate future in texas uh but uh if it's a matter of consigning coins we can make it very easy for people um just give us a call at, at the office and uh, talk to Andy or me about it and mention Texas show and uh, we'd be pleased to uh, offer alternatives. Very good. Very good. Uh, someone else asking about technology stuff and getting an app ready. Any any future um, type of work on, on getting special apps for great collections going? 
Yeah, so uh, the answer is yes. In fact, I, I have one in demo that's probably been in demo uh, here internally for a couple of years now. It, it, it got finished in 2020, uh, but I, I've not released it because I, I got busy on other things and I'm always, uh, it needs to be tested. It needs to be thoroughly tested. It, I mean, so far it works, but I have I didn't make it the priority because our, our website works on mobile devices. And in fact, 40% of our, our clients are bidding. I find it shocking. It's such a high percentage are bidding and doing everything on their phone. And uh, so our website does work everywhere. I do think uh, I do think we need an app, but we just haven't haven't uh, implemented yeah. it. I found your website to be very controversial for tech people. I don't I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but because so for, if you, you guys need to go to greatcollections.com and check it out, but a lot of the form and function is just old school. Yep, look and feel. And some people love that. And other people like get with the times. And it's very interesting. Yeah. I've had the conversation with people and it's really interesting to me. I'm like, oh, okay. Because some people really prefer the way that you can sort and do things on your website that it doesn't visually appear the way that a lot of the modern websites do. But I, I, I completely I, agree. It's all. Yeah. I tend to fall in the function category with most things in life. So I'm like, I, I think function is good here. It, it, no, it, it is. Uh... It is old and old design, and part of that is mentioning what we did, what I did earlier about changing. Sometimes it's difficult to change. It, it was great in 2011. It was great, and we have definitely made changes. We're up to, I think we're up to change 21,300 now since we launched. We have a we have a tracking system, and I think we're up to 21,000 and something. And so we definitely make changes, and I have new designs in the works as well. Um, we actually hired a, a new marketing chief a few months ago, and. Uh, he uh, he makes fun of our design of of our site, so he he's put together some amazing changes to it. Yeah. Um, so you will see it, but it is we we do value the function over anything else. I, I'm not I'm not one to have some glamorous website or some uh, uh, brochure as if we're selling Rolexes or something or Tiffany things. It, it's about function and uh, and it works well for yeah almost everyone. Occasionally we'll get. Somebody saying, "Oh, it's it, I, I can't work it out." But ninety nine percent of our clients work it out really quickly um, on how to use it, use the site. Yeah. Well, I, I think that that's just a, uh, like I said, with it being functionally, the, I think people's complaint is the visual because they want something modern. I'm like, I know what you guys are talking about. Yeah. Well, they will they will see that soon. So in, yeah, in a few months we will be uh, changing changing that a little bit, but not too much. We're not going to do too much too quickly and uh I, I don't want to have i don't want it to be a complicated website there's so many websites out there in collectibles we purposely don't include certain things on our site such as uh price guides or some price histories and things like that on listings because we we find them to be really confusing for most people unless unless you really know how to study the results um yeah. the, that that data can be very misleading and uh on on certain coins so we we do things a little bit differently, but it does work. That's interesting you mentioned that because I was, you know, I've got, I haven't shown, I got a couple of coins to show you real quick here in a minute. But one of the things that I found out when I was looking up one of these coins is that, you know, if if, if I go to the PCGS price guide and there either auction results, there's no great collections results anywhere, which I thought, what, why why is that? I didn't understand so uh yeah and that's something that we do get asked about uh we have them all on our website in uh, in our auction archive and i've never i've never wanted to build somebody else's website with our content i i think the information is really valuable particularly that we're selling 120 130 140,000 coins a year certified coins it's a huge number and I think our auction archive is really valuable. The worst thing I see is companies that want our data, uh, when it's up on their site, they'll have banner ads for our on for our listings, they'll on those pages, they'll have banner ads for our competitors that they're earning money from and to take people to other competing websites. So it's not that yeah. we're not releasing the data, it's available for everyone free of charge. We have a very easy system of searching. By uh, uh, by coin de uh, year denomination etc and grade, uh, there's 1.2 something million records now 
in our auction archive, but we're just wanting to keep the traffic on our, our website. But yeah, it is it's freely available. We're not we're certainly not hiding the information. Uh, it's it is all there. We're just not releasing it to to third parties. And that policy may change in the future. I, most decisions, I'm a hundred percent certain I'm making the right decision. This one, I'm only about sixty percent. I and it's. Uh, I, I I 100% understand being on the fence on this one. Like when I look at the decision, I'm like, okay, I can understand why you would want to just maintain it for your, for, you know, yourself. It's a, it's a complicated thing though, because there's other times when I look at a, a company and I'm surprised that they don't have some more integration with another company that's a competitor. Because, you know, I know for PCGS, obviously, everyone knows who they are. And so the number of people... I know, and PCGS, they're not a competitor. They're, they're, no, no, I mean, no. But, but here, my train of thought is if all the people who use their website for pricing and auction results, maybe they already know you exist. But if, if your stuff's not popping up there, it's like, are you missing something? Right. So, I, I could really take either side of the argument for for no, for, and and I see both sides. I see yeah. there's advantages that we would meet new customers that we wouldn't normally meet because they'll see our listings on these different different websites, and and they do ask it. Everyone asks us for it, uh, but I once you release it to one, you kind of have to release it to everybody. It, it it's out there everywhere, and I just I I still think having it on our site with getting the tra traffic is trumps it it's it, it, say it's 60 percent, 40 percent, maybe but uh but that may change in the future it's not not something we can't change uh it's if a, we it's an understandable decision from my perspective so I, I i get where you're coming from and if if things are working for you you know why change? Well, that's, yeah that's I exactly and that that's one uh when people do ask me why and they they think i'm crazy i say well it kind of it, it's been working maybe this is the decision maybe this one decision is the reason why it's worked and uh, i mean i don't believe that i i probably say that in jest but um but, but yes you know, but i say most decisions most decisions i make i i'm 100 percent on this one i'm not but i am over 50 like i'm 60 percent. so if it gets under 50 then uh then we'll change our decision for, for for a guy who decided hey i'm going to start a coin auction company that is different than everyone else's just on his own i think going with your gut's a pretty good idea yeah exactly and that's all we do at the end of the day we have to go with our gut and um and i we are like we'll defend any decision we make whether it's right or wrong um we'll always tell you what our thought process <laughs> was at the time or is at the time so yeah well, I've got I've got a few things that I'm going to consign to great collections. Oh, wonderful! Nothing I too. That. I didn't know this was a consignment call as well. No, no. Well, I had. This is a little bit of the the book of Ben going forward here. That I, you know, just collectors and dealers all do things their own way. But you know, I always like to have a few things out of consignment here and there. I call it like planting seeds. Planting seeds, great. You know, it's like you throw stuff out, and then the money comes back later. Like oh I forgot I had that money coming and it's really a nice effect, um, but uh, I'm not going to ask for any type of evaluation on anything here. I'm just going to show you. Wow, this great, is, a great coin. Yeah, this is a uh, 1851 uh, large cent in a four red with a CAC. Right, great coin. It. And so that's kind of fun because a large cent with a a large cent with a red with a CAC is something you don't see every day. Yeah, it's an older holder too, and obviously was graded a while ago. Yeah, I was going for stuff that I felt was just kind of unique and different, and just kind of scattered around. I like that. Um, next up, so this is actually a from the SS uh, Republic, a Founders Edition. Uh, you know, one of these forty-three out of fifty on. Uh, I've not seen that label, the Founders Edition, on an eighteen forty-nine ten. Well, you know, it's one of those things in our marketplace today where, you know, you've got people that they collect coins and they collect holders, you know, and so. Well, and ship, I mean, the shipwreck pedigree in general, right? We have a, a lot of collectors that, that focus on just shipwreck coins yeah. and, and including all around the world. That coin is a very high chance that'll sell overseas. Uh, yeah. We have uh, big collectors of shipwreck coins overseas. Yeah, it's a hard, it's, it's interesting because it was a hard coin to find data on. So to me, that's always intriguing. You know, you talked earlier about having an auction coin 
and telling someone when they have an auction coin. And I, I use this term a lot with collectors. And I try to explain sometimes, you know, going back to your gut decisions. But when I can't find a lot of data on something, I know it's a, auctions are always a chance, so to speak. You, you're not guaranteed anything. But at the same time, you know, I just view, view it when I see a coin that I think has upside and has a relatively level floor, that to me is an auction coin. Well, yeah, and on shipwreck coins, for example, that that there's not a lot of data points data points on, and in today's market as well, it's very different. If it was a weaker market, you could you may want to look more closely at from a coin shop standpoint on what what you'd be consigning. But this is the best market we've seen. It's best I've seen, and I I moved here in two thousand two thousand one. This is the best uh, coin market we've seen in that time, and so it's very vibrant. So you can almost there's no uh, wrong decision to make there. Yeah. Last but not least, now this is something you need a microscope to see. Well, not the label, obviously, but uh, this is a double dye variety. Speaking oh, okay. of all those ca calls that you and I both get about double dyes and stuff, that uh, um, y it's hard to see the doubling, but of course, PCGS has it all verified here, and it's 67. This is a top pop, pop two with zero. Oh, wow. And the only... Uh, we found an auction record in a six, one grade down, for I think like six or seven hundred dollars on great collections oh, uh, a, a year or two ago. So, top pop two zero, which we made this coin, which is really unusual. You cherry, you cherry picked it. Well, the engineer. So you know, I don't expect to know who the engineer is, but the engineer is someone who works with me, and he likes this type of stuff. So he got that out of a mint set. Wow! And sent it in, and, and it, came back. And Wow. Okay. That's yeah. so that's pretty impressive. He's going through 1976 mint sets. He he's got an eye for things. Um, he's learning a lot more about it. Uh you know, he's he likes the detail of finding little things. He would he sure. would be an actual VAM collector, but yep. some of the stuff that he's learned since he's been working with us is that I think his his attention to grade is a lot better than it would have been when he just started. So not that not that you would have known it was going to come back a seven. He was really just looking for the double die varieties. Sure. Sure. But uh, but also he can he can pick some some stuff for grade when it comes to modern proof sets and mint sets stuff like that. So it's kind of fun. Well, that's great. That's uh, the engineer. I'm going to remember that the engineer. The engineer. Go. Yeah, I, I make some offhanded remarks about the engineer. And if you've ever seen old uh, American sitcoms, there's like there's characters in some shows like where. All you ever see is right. Like right. he's like the unknown, unmet, un unseen uh, force. One of the forces, the engineer and Zach the shipper. These are the two guys that I rely on the most in the back. In the front of the shop, we've got you know people who've got to take care of the front of the shop and help customers. But in the back, we got people that are they want to deal with things more than they want to deal with people, which is good. Understood. Every you need those. You need those people in your life. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, no, we'll uh, we'll do good for you on those. And uh, yeah, that's great. Well, I, I appreciate it. I could talk all day with you about coins and business and stuff. Um, I just want to thank you for your time and for coming hey, on. No, thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, any anytime you want to do this again, yeah. just let, let me know. Any uh, If there's anything else that you want to plug, push, or or tell people about right now before we say I do, go for it. Uh, anything that I should have asked you and I didn't? Uh, no, I mean, I, I think I sent you the news last night of the new uh, social media uh, site that we we launched yesterday um, called My Collect. Uh, that's something I'd love to chat with you more about it at some point after you've had a had a, had a chance to look look at it. Um, yeah. And uh, but otherwise, yeah, we're we're twenty four seven on great collections and My Collect. Those are the two uh, two things when, we're working. On. When you when you told me that you had launched so behind the scenes he he sends me this link just now they just launched it like uh at the time of this filming they just launched it a day ago or whatever yep. and, and all i could think of was okay so you run great collections and you have time to start a new social media digital platform that's i, I don't know i mean i have a great i have a great team and actually a separate team's working on on my collect and uh they're awesome just like my gc team and uh, it's something, uh, we've been working on that for a year, kind of in secret. We're like we didn't tell anybody and, and, yep. uh, only for the last week, I, I gave a few demos and sent a couple of emails. I think I sent you an email saying, Hey, I have some news coming out. So, um, uh, stay tuned. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, it's fun and it's, 
it's probably why I have bags under my eyes today and um and for the last for the last year but but it's it's thoroughly enjoyable it's it's what I love doing so yeah well you know I'm I'm I, you and I probably both have a little bit of that serial entrepreneur in us where like I've got a coin show that I'm launching in January and it's not like I'm not busy already like yeah right you didn't need it and it's yeah, yeah. but but uh, I think that's uh, I think that's great. I need to make sure that that's on our schedule as well. Um, that would be I, fantastic. Yeah, I need to make it, it, and you guys will love uh, the Sonoran Desert if you haven't been down to Tucson. And uh, we're gonna have a nice coin community event. That's that's what I'm pushing for. So yeah, and it's it's not that far for us, uh, which is always beneficial. That it's uh, if you, if you had it uh, on the other side of the country, it's more of a hassle to get to. Yeah, so, uh, it's good. Well, nice to officially meet your acquaintance. And yeah, thanks for your likewise. Time yeah, no, thank you for having me again. Cheers. Coin coin dealers aren't really known for uh, for their for their um, dating prowess. That's true. That is right. true. But uh, so wow, I'll... you have you have Fosters in the background. You have Tim Tams. Oh, did you did you notice those? I did. I, and I'm sure that's uh, not normal. I'm sure that's not your normal background. This, this is my everyday background. <laughs> sure. I just, I just, I just roll with it that way. I, you know, it's good because we can create some quick outtakes just by talking about this stuff real quick. Now, now I know that Foster's is not actually Australian for beer. Do, is it popular in Australia or no? Cause I know that it's an American company now. It's really, uh, it's really something for exports. Uh, yeah. Australians don't really drink Fosters down there. Um, it's it's well known, but it's not the best Australian beer. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd, I'd imagine not. I didn't think I could Barnes. find anything locally that was actually Australian. No, Tim Tams are those are Australian or I guess English. They're they're very uh, um, very bad for you, but lovely. <laughs> Speaking of bad uh -huh. for you, yeah. So, so this is Australian licorice. I'm not so sure about that. I think. They launched that after I left Australia 20 years ago. And I'm it says uh, made in Australia on it, so I'm gonna buy it. Yeah, I guess. So. All right. Well, I got one more here. What's that? That one I don't even know. Oh, is that right? Oh man. Okay, so that's yeah. So uh there's two other brands of that. When I was in Australia, that didn't exist, but uh yeah. one's called Violet Crumble and one's called uh what was the other one? There was the, there's a competitor to Violet Crumble. Uh, but they're very similar, and that that I guess it is Australian. We get a lot of uh, that that kind of uh, junk food from England, and it's like the licorice is probably there's a there's probably a very similar package that says English licorice, and it's really the same, exactly the same thing. Correct. It's like when you buy ketchup at the store, and it says yeah. Heinz, and it's three dollars, and it says generic brand, and it's two dollars, and it's the same product. It may be exactly the same, same, yeah. same factory, and everything. Exactly. Oh my goodness. Well, that so. Where do you go to get good Australian? Do, do, is there any Australian import to America that you go to purchase, or it doesn't matter? You know, no. I mean, the the biggest joke uh, for Australians is the Outback Steakhouse, right? And um, <laughs> I didn't even think of that. It's not. Uh, it, I don't think there is a single one in Australia, um, and most of the menu is not Australia, uh, not Australian. And I remember. Um, an old old friend of mine 20 years 20 15 20 years ago uh was in town and it was my birthday and they thought where are we we're going to take ian and they worked out this this uh, uh restaurant to go to and it was the outback steakhouse and That's it was probably the worst uh place for me being australian i'm thinking i'm looking at this thinking this is not this is not australian <laughs> well i mean imagine if you're an american and you go overseas and it's like oh good we, they got mcdonald's like what are we going to do with yeah. that we That's have McDonald's. Representation. No, no, true. And uh, um, but America, I don't know. Uh, one of the reasons why I'm here, America has it all, and uh, yeah. there's great, great food of every uh, um, every region. And um, but yeah, Australia is not really known for for its food like that. Yeah. Well, I could I could talk about Australia all day. Um, I'm always intrigued by people from who are from someplace I'm not, and just talk to them about you know, their cultural, I will get down cultures, but I'm just going to run with a quick intro. And since we're recording, we'll, uh, we'll just move from there. So sure, sure. Hey, guys, it's Ben the coin geek at old public coin. And